Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We had started with the module of introduction to electromagnetic interference. And the last lecture I had given an introduction of what is electromagnetic interference and what are its different types and what is the frequency range which is of importance from perspective of EMI. Now let us go further and uh, let us see how is it measured. EMI is measured with the unit of decibels. You may be already familiar with this unit. This is a logarithmic unit. So, if we have output power P O and input power P I, then the ratio of it if you take the log and multiply it with 10, if we call this is A, so then this is what is your decibels. So, now this is uh, a ratio, but then uh, what we do is say if we want to express the power, let us say in decibels and uh, we have power in watts. So, if it is, if we want in decibel watts, then this would be obtained as 10 log of the power P when expressed in watts. So, now uh, we know that power is uh, proportional to V square. So, if you want to write voltage in decibels, so that means decibel volt if you want to express it it will be equal to 20 log of this voltage V which is in its unit is volt. So, that is your decibel volt and similarly we can write for uh, rest also. Now, for uh, EMI purpose it is basically noise measurement and those are very small voltages. So, that will be decibels micro volt that is the unit in which we want it. So, it will be given as 20 log of the voltage which has to be in micro volts. So, that will be your dB micro volts the unit. And uh, now, if we are going to measure in volts and if we know the uh, decibel volt, so that will be dB volt plus you have to add 120 dB micro volt. Now, from where is this 120 coming? Uh, you might have already guessed it because uh, the ratio of volt to micro volt uh, when you convert it into decibels, so that will be 120. So, that is why we are adding 120 to it and uh, this is logarithmic unit. So, multiplication will become addition. Then further, if you want to express current, so now your current is uh, voltage by your impedance. So, let us say this is a T and let us say this is the uh, transfer impedance for uh, whatever probe, current probe that you may be using the, the termination impedance. So, if you want to express this in decibels microampere. So, that will be given as dB micro volt minus Zt dB ohms and uh, what is this uh, dB ohms? Uh, so, that is your Z dB ohms that is equal to 20 log of Z when expressed in ohms. So, the unit is decibel ohm. So, these are the measurement units, your uh, decibel, so decibel micro volt, decibel uh, your dB micro ampere or uh, dB micro watt, those will be generally the units. So, for impedance it will be dB ohms. And uh, if we have conducted uh, EMI being measured, so it will be mostly your dB micro volt for conducted EMI. 
because it is uh, transferred through cables and so voltage is what the noise in the voltage is what can be measured and then also if you wish you can uh, calculate the corresponding current using the impedance of the probe that uh, you are going to use for measurement. And uh, further it may be dB micro volt per meter when it is radiated EMI because that is mostly uh, your fields electromagnetic fields which are going to be measured using antennas and so this per meter is what is going to come. It is not only just going to be the voltage measurement but per meter uh, the per unit distance part will also come in the measurement unit. Now we saw that what is the unit of the measurement but what are the quantities of a signal which needs to be measured for EMI. So, let us say we have uh, two signals, uh, this is one signal and this is another signal. So, uh, we can measure the peak of these signals using some peak detectors. So, uh, we can have a peak being measured. Now, the peak is going to be the same for uh, both of them as we can see because the peak value is same. And we can also measure the average of these signals that means you can record the full signal in the oscilloscope and then from that you can calculate the average. So, for a certain time period uh, what we see is that, that the average of both of these two signals are also same. So, if we just measure peak and if we measure average, so uh, both of these two signals although they are different I mean as far as the signal quantities which we are measuring they will give us the same value. So that means these two quantities are not sufficient for measurement because we have to distinguish these two signals these two signals will create different types of interferences. So you might be familiar with RMS root mean square. So root mean square is what? you must be knowing that uh, whatever is your signal may be. So, let us say V square uh, dt is what you integrate and you divide it over the uh, time interval. So, that uh, and you further take the root over of it. So, that is your RMS quantity uh, that we uh, talk about. Now, this is mostly of, uh, associated with the heating effect where it is your uh, um, RMS value. Now, RMS value is uh, used in your uh, power engineering a lot. Now, that value is not what is uh, measured here, we, we are not talking about the heating effect here. Uh, but uh, we are talking about its capability to create uh, disturbance uh, with other systems or the same system. So, it is the peak or the transients uh, which are more important for us to observe or its frequency uh, has to be noted down. So, for that there is another term uh, which is used which is your quasi peak this is another quantity. Now, this is something like RMS, but it is not uh, RMS quantity. So, this is basically dependent on how many times we have the peak coming in and also associated with the what is the value of the peak. So, if you can see here that the quasi peak that will be detected by the instrument that you will be using will be of this level for this signal. And for this second signal, the quasi peak will be detected lower because here the time number of times the peak is coming is uh, lesser than this. So, that is how you can using the quasi peak quantity you can distinguish uh, between these two signals. So, your peak, quasi peak, and average these are the three quantities which may be measured for EMI. Now, what are the measuring equipment? So, first one what you see here is a spectrum analyzer. Sometimes people also call it as EMI analyzer. This is 
the equipment. So, what uh, it measured is um, your uh, whatever is the noise or the disturbance voltages uh, with respect to the frequency for different different frequencies what is the level of the disturbance that is what uh, this uh, spectrum analyzer or EMI analyzer is going to measure. And then uh, further uh, there are different types of probes uh, which are used for EMI measurements. So, these are uh, what are called as near field probes and this is for measuring the magnetic field. So, it is also called as the edge field probe and uh, then these are the E field probes that is measuring the electric fields. So, these kind of probes are also used for uh, EMI testing and measurement. Then further uh, this is a picture of uh, what is called as a listen line impedance uh, stabilization network. Now, what uh, it does is uh, its action is like that of a filter, it does not uh, let the whatever is the disturbance or the noise that is coming from the supply side to enter into the device which is going to be tested and whatever is the device noise it does not let it go to the supply. So, th uh, its action is similar to that of a, of a filter. Now, let us see how do we test it. So, this is a picture of a EMI test facility. So, this is the table here on this uh, this device which is going to be tested is kept and uh, then these are your those listen line impedance stabilization networks and the source is actually outside uh, this uh, room. So, this room is uh, what is called as the screen room or a shielded room. So, this is the room uh, which is completely shielded from any sort of uh, electromagnetic wave that uh, there is no possibility of it entering. So, for example, if you um, enter in these kind of screen rooms with your cell phones, you will not be getting any signal. So, it is a completely electromagnetically shielded room. And supply is uh, outside uh, through wires it comes it goes through the listen. So, this picture shows you that. So, supply may be outside it first goes through the listen and uh, then it uh, this through the listen the uh, electrical connection. So, the cables reaches to the device uh, which has to be tested DUT is device under test and this is an electrically insulated table and this actually shows the, the screen room. And uh, uh, then uh, through the probes uh, these measurements of the listen can be done and uh, then actually this uh, the spectrum analyzer is also kept outside the screen room. Further uh, this is for your conducted EMI testing where we do not need antennas when we will be measuring your radiated EMI then we will be needing antennas. So, those antennas can also be kept inside the room. So, here you can see in this picture different types of antennas are kept. So, depending on the requirement the type of antenna can be chosen and that particular antenna can be kept and uh, then that can be used for testing the radiated EMI. So, this is uh, uh, the diagram of what can be inside listen. So, as I told you it is something like a filter. So, here uh, you see that, that this is like a CLC filter. So, this is the supply uh, which is going to come through L and N points. Then so, this part will be filtering out whatever is the noise that may be coming from there and it would not let it go to the device which is under test. And whatever the noise, the high frequency noise that may be generated by the device that uh, will be confined by these capacitors uh, in this uh, area. 
and so here those noises can then then the corresponding voltages can be then measured at these points and then these are the ones which are connected to the probes which then go to the spectrum analyzer. And the probes uh, that we use are usually of 50 ohm termination. So, it is always uh, intended that the impedance that is seen by the probes over here because of the listen is also a 50 ohm. So, then there will be no reflection in the signals. And uh, of course, say you would like to measure all corresponding to the ground plane that is your earth uh, there and also the differential voltages that may be present. So, that is why this is also connected to the this point is connected to ground. This is what is inside your listen and this is used for the measurement of your conducted EMI. Then radiated EMI some part of it I already explained you. So, what will be there is that inside the screen room we will keep the antenna the antenna has to be chosen properly which type of antenna is uh, going to be required for the corresponding radiated EMI measurement. It depends on what standards we want to pass and in that it is specified which antenna has to be used for the measurement. And uh, further you keep the device under test on the table and the device can be kept in different different angles that means you can rotate the table and keep the device at different different angles with respect to the antenna. The antenna here it is shown as a vertical, uh, but uh, it need not be always vertical. The antenna's uh, position might also be changed. It can also be kept in the horizontal position and then also the measurements can be made. So, whatever are the waves that are induced here that are received by the antenna. So, then uh, through uh, the probes they are taken out of the screen room and then they are measured by the spectrum analyzer. So, that is how your radiated EMI measurement takes place. So, what uh, you will be obtaining in a radiated uh, or a conducted EMI measurement is something like this you will be getting amplitudes dB microvolt. Now, this uh, what I have shown you here is for conducted EMI. So, this that is why this is dB microvolt. If it is for radiated uh, the unit will become a dB microvolt per meter because uh, uh, in radiated EMI distance plays an important role how far uh, we are keeping the antenna from the source is important. So, antenna may be kept at 3 meter distance or 5 meter distance or 10 meter whatever the distance that may be specified on that distance the measurement is being done. So, that distance has to be accounted for. So, it will become dB microvolt per meter. So, then um, uh, the frequency range I had already shown you last lecture that for conducted EMI is 150 kilohertz to your uh, 30 megahertz. So, you may be doing this measurements and then this kind of uh, some kind of a jittery waveform uh, that you may be getting on the spectrum analyzer. Now, uh, you may be thinking that uh, okay fine all these measurements are done then how do we know that uh, whether the converter that you have designed or whatever the system is under test whether its performance is uh, satisfactory or not whether it is going to create the disturbance with others or with itself or not how do you know that. So, for that uh, there are limits uh, specified by different organizations and if uh, uh, the measurements are below those limits that means you have passed the EMI test. So, EMI test certificates have to be acquired by different product manufacturers for they be able to launch the product in the market and there they have to mention which is the uh, EMC standard that they have followed or they have passed. So, the different organizations which make these uh, EMC standards many of them are there. So, few of them are listed is here is CISPR. This is one international organization which uh, makes the standards for EMC and uh, then another is your FCC Federal Communications Commissions uh, they also make it. I have just uh, written here names of some of uh, the standards that are made uh, by these organizations. There may be many of them like here is the CISPR 25, CISPR 32, FCC part 15. So, there may be different parts uh, that may be specified by 
the particular standard making organization and uh, there may be one part which may be uh, relevant for one particular type of product. Then European standards, uh, there is another one. So, one of their standards is, is named as EN 55101. Then ISO standards are there, then International Electrotechnical Commission that is also another organization which makes the standards for EMC and one of their standard is named like IEC 61000. So, uh, again these may be different different names are there for different different standards uh, depending on the system for what it is intended for it has uh, to get a certificate for that particular uh, part uh, number of uh, for which uh, it is I mean the application is relevant. Now, how these standards look like? So, this is what is uh, shown here. So, this is FCC class A conducted EMI limit. So, what you see here is the frequency range is provided first 15 kilohertz uh, to this uh, 0 0.5 megahertz. Here uh, the limit is uh, given as uh, 79 the quasi peak limit and the average limit if you are measuring the average. So, that should come as 66 uh, dB micro volt. And uh, then for your uh, 0 0.5 to 30 megahertz it is 73 dB micro volt for your quasi peak and for average it is 60. Further for that same FCC class A 10 meter radiated EMI limit. So, note that this 10 meter is important because this is radiated EMI uh, limit. So, uh, how much distance the antenna has to be kept uh, for measurement that uh, is specified by this. So, 30 to 88 megahertz uh, 39 is the limit and the unit note down here dB micro volt per meter and 88 to 216 megahertz it is 43.5 is the limit 219 to 960 it is 46.5 and above 960 that means close to 1 gigahertz the limit is 49.5 dB micro volt per meter. Then uh, for class uh, B FCC class B conducted EMI limits those are also given here. Now uh, what is this class A and class B? So class A are the devices or the systems which are going to be used for your know, commercial applications uh, they may be used in a business environment or in industrial environment. And class B are the ones which are going to be used for your residential environments. So, obviously class B limits are more stringent than class A limits. So, you can compare here you can see that 0 0.15 to 0.5 megahertz what you see here the quasi peak limit is 66 to 56 whereas here this limit was a 79 which was higher and the average also you can see it is 56 to 46 and here it was a 66 uh, dB micro volt in case of class A. Uh, then 0 0.5 to 5 megahertz 56 is the limit for quasi peak 46 for average and 5 to 30 megahertz 60 is the quasi peak limit and 50 for your average limit. And for class B the this uh, radiated EMI limit if the distance that is given is 3 meters. So, now the antenna that has to be kept for measurement is going to be 3 meters from the device under test. So, here again you can see here similarly the limits are again provided for your class uh, B products. Now, if we plot these limits because uh, this is shown in the tabular form it can also be plotted. What you will be getting is something like this uh, this is shown for uh, CISPR class B conducted EMI limit. So, the unit is dB micro volt. So, uh, here first it decreases linearly and uh, then it is this is the limit which is given from your 0 0.5 megahertz to your 5 megahertz and then from your 5 megahertz to 30 megahertz these are the limits that are given. 
So, one is for your class A and another uh, is for your this is for your class B conducted EMI limit. So, average and quasi peak both are given over here. So, this is shown for your CI SPR class A conducted EMI limit. So, these are uh, similar uh, tables as uh, we saw for your FCC uh, limits uh, EMC standards that are given. So, you class A conducted EMI limits and class B conducted EMI limits. Here uh, your for radiated EMI both class A and class B at 10 meter and 3 meter distance uh, what are the limits that are tabulated here. Now, there may be small little differences between two standards that you may be following, but uh, there are many similarities also between them. And I already showed you if you plot it for your quasi peak and your average, this is what is the nature of the uh, limit that you will be observing. So, when this uh, spectrum analyzer or EMI analyzer is used then uh, this kind of uh, uh, waveform is what you may be observing. So, the, uh, what you have to see is that, that uh, it is not crossing those uh, standards or the limits that are given. So, for example, here if it is uh, crossing that, so that means it is crossing the your uh, quasi peak and uh, average limit. So, what we see is that quasi peak limit is higher and average limit is lower. So, this is for your average and uh, this one is for your quasi peak. So, depending on when we measure the quasi peak or the average uh, you can uh, check the uh, limits that are there and whether the waveform or the, uh, the frequency spectrum that you measured, the noise that you measured using the spectrum analyzer, whether it is crossing at any point those limits or not. If it is not crossing, that means you have passed the MI test. If you have not, then you have to do some changes in the design or you have to do some, uh, you have to design your enclosure or uh, some EMI filter. You have to do some measures to reduce the uh, noise that is the disturbance that is being generated by the device you have designed. So, what are the key points of uh, this lecture that uh, your uh, measurement units are logarithmic units and conducted EMI measures in decibels micro volt and the radiated EMI measures in decibel micro volt per meter. Then uh, three quantities uh, which are important one is peak average and a quasi peak and uh, limits given by different organizations which make the EMC standards uh, which you um, have to see while testing EMI whether you are below those limits or not. Thank you.